Welcome to The Secret Place with Steph Abane, devotions for hungry hearts and searching souls. Hey there, life signs today. A little bit more from Henry now, and this is Stepha in The Secret Place. I am glad you're here. And I want to talk about something today, the subtitle. It says, um, Intimacy, Fecundity, and Ecstasy in Christian Perspective by Henry Nouwen. Ecstasy, okay, we can understand intimacy a little bit and even fecundity, that flourishing and, and, and uh, uh, flourishing kind of life that we talked about. But ecstasy? Wait, Christians don't talk about ecstasy. What is ecstasy? We're, we're definitely not talking about drugs and we're not talking about sexuality. But we're talking about something here with ecstasy. So let's see what Nawan has to say. So he says, he's talking about community. And he says, community is the place where God completes our lives with his joy. Every word Jesus spoke was spoken to share his own joy with us and thus make our joy complete in him. That's from John 15, 11. This complete joy is always ours. That is, it always belongs to a life together. Ecstasy is always a movement towards shared life. Static living separates us and turns us into isolated individuals fighting for our own individual survival. But ecstatic living leads us to the place where new life is discovered among us. It makes us break through the walls of isolation and become a people of God, people who proclaim the joy of eternal life that has already begun. It is the first sign of the kingdom that Jesus came to proclaim. Mm, There's a lot there, isn't it? So ecstasy, wow, what did he say again? Ecstasy is always a movement toward shared life. That's probably where the idea of ecstasy um, in terms of sexuality comes from. But but obviously, let's look at it outside of the sexuality here. Life together in the gathering of the believers is a place where Nuan is saying you can really find joy. Um, this is so important, and I think it's so misunderstood. It's like <clears throat> some people think, well, why are Christians so happy? Every time I've looked, they've got a smile on their face. They've got all this happiness, this joy. And for what reason? Her life is just miserable and his life is, <clears throat> he's impoverished and she just lost her job. And why are they so happy? So if you know Christians like that, and that's the stereotype you've seen, well, you know, in some ways that's great because there is that joy that, and that just like the peace that passes understanding, there's that joy that is situated in something other than the material world, right? Um, I'm sure, though, some of you might say, well, that's not the stereotype or the norm I see among Christians I know. Uh, I see the opposite. Well, I, I see the opposite, too. We, we've got to remember that everyone who goes by the name of Christ, who is a Christ follower, what do we have in common besides that belief? <laughs> We're all human. We're all human. We are all human, and we are all having to deal with the human condition. So when Nuan talks about ecstasy being uh, compatible with joy, or parallel to joy, or mixed up with joy, he is associating it with the shared life of the people of faith, the life that we share together. And the reason why we don't always feel or see, one of the reasons why we don't always feel or see and experience that joy is because um, the gathering together of believers is not, it's not always, it's not typically a shared life. It's let's get together in some pews and listen to a sermon or um, let's get together, you know, and uh, just not really share life, but sit together and listen and be kind of passive. Um, I used to call it pew potatoes. Just sit there. And, you know, I hope that's not offensive to you if, 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 that's, if that's the extent of your spiritual life. Because, you know, there's something wonderful about the habit and the discipline of saying, I don't want a week to go by where I don't gather with the people of faith and put myself in a position where I can hear the words of God and hear a sermon. And I'm not, I'm not um, bashing that. I'm simply saying that's not where joy comes from. 
that's not where joy comes from. And that is definitely not, you know, uh, where ecstasy, the kind of joyful ecstasy comes from, from being a part of the family of God. It comes from really sharing lives with each other. Just think about your life like outside of the community of faith. Do you have a really close friend? You might run with the friend. You might um, go to the gym with that friend. You might share meals together. You might go on trips together. Um, you might work together. And there's a closeness and a richness, a sharing and openness that in your conversations you are vulnerable. You make yourself vulnerable. She or he makes himself vulnerable to you. And there's a joy that emerges in that, in the beauty of that friendship and that shared life, even if you're not sharing the same faith. Well, you know, people of the same faith, in the community of faith, in the churches, in the body of Christ, need to have that kind of shared life in order to experience the joy, in order to experience that kind of, um, that perspective on ecstasy that Henry Nouwen is talking about. Um, do I think that we can live in like a constant state of joy? You know, I don't think so. There, there was a time in my life where I, I like to believe that and for the most part there was kind of a, an underlying joy in my life, especially I'm thinking like 20s and 30s, like where I could I could say yes, but then when I when I didn't experience that joy, and I didn't uh, exhibit that joy, I always felt like I fell, like I, I, I let someone down, maybe let God down, like somehow I've got my eyes on uh, something else, not on not on Him. Somehow, you know, I'm letting that joy dissipate from my life, and it's my fault, you know, and that would just get me down. Ugh. Talk about moody. That would just get me down. But today, in this last bunch of years, I, I don't think it's a. I, I don't think it can be a constant state. And I think that when it appears as a constant state, I think it's more of either a pretense or just a wannabe Christianity, like an idealized version. Wish it were so. Wish it were so we're in this world and as beautiful as it is as much as I know I talk a lot about the beauty and the the beauty of creation and and what God made for us and how he um the patterns and the just the glory of his creation come on come on there there's a lot of darkness and pain and you know if, if, if right at this moment you're not having darkness and pain, that is so good. That's wonderful. But all you have to look, do is just tilt your head sideways a little bit this way or, or next and see people in great pain. And then if, if in your inner circle no one's in great pain, whew, that's really good. But then just look a little farther into your community or into extended family or into the next state over or another culture. There is so much darkness in this world and the and so what I'm saying is if we're in constant joy there's no time to lament and we need to lament there's times for lamentation there's a whole book in the Bible called Lamentations and if you look at Psalms much of what David did and some of the prophets did many of the prophets did throughout the Old Testament the Old Covenant is lament there's room and there's need for it. Why do you think God gave us tears? We need to express the grief. So how do you express that grief? How do you let the tears flow? How do you open up to feel the pain if, you, if you're in constant joy? So my, my uh, admonition for today is don't get down on yourself if you're not in constant joy. You cannot be. You can, is there always something to be grateful for? Yes, absolutely. But that place of ecstasy that, that is so like the joy that Nowen talks about, there's a time for that. Like it says in Ecclesiastes, there's a time for, you know, there's a time for everything. There's a season and time for everything under the heavens. Um, a time to give birth and a time to die, 
a time to hold on to someone and kiss them, a time to refrain from it. Uh, there's a time for everything. So let's let's remember to that there is a hope for joy and there's room for joy. There's lots of room for joy. And the Lord said in what I read to you, um, let their joy be full. You know, there is room for this. Ecstasy is not a bad word. It's something we should be looking at as Christians. And we should be, uh, I love to say the word should, because I don't care. I'm not supposed to say the word should. I'm saying the word should. We should be releasing that valve and letting the joy be full, as well as the lamentation. And as we feel our own feelings and our own laments, we can better lament with others and help them and empathize through their pain. And you know what that does? That just makes you and me more susceptible and open to, um, to the joy. So go find some joy today, some lasting joy. The joy is found in Christ and it's in sharing your life with others. Go do it. I'm going to do some of that today too. In the meantime, have a wonderful day. This is Stefa from The Secret Place. I will see you again. Bye. Breathe, listen, and receive. Take a moment to soak it all in. Until next time.